Hi everyone, uh, this is Dr. Nali. So this is the third video now on the idea, the concepts of root mean square velocity and kinetic energy. In the previous video, we basically derived these two major equations um, of the kinetic molecular theory that relates microscopic properties to macroscopic properties. Okay, so then you ask, well, well what do you mean by microscopic macroscopic relationship? Well, very simple. The a uh, component on the left part of this is um, what we call the microscopic quantity. So this is the average speed of a gas particle, the root mean square velocity. And the idea is, of course, we can't really go out and measure how fast things are. But what, that, what uh, this equation allows us to do is to use things like temperature, which is something we can measure, that's why it's called a macroscopic property. We can measure temperature and we can relate that back to something that's a microscopic property, the speed of molecules. And so by using this equation, we can then get at what is the average speed of, let's say, a collection of helium gas, for example, a one mole of helium gas. Okay? Um, and that's important. And the other important equation, of course, is the kinetic energy equation that tells you that in one mole of a gas, the kinetic energy is three halves times R times temperature. Um, and so pretty much the temperature is related to the kinetic energy. Now, before we go on uh, to actually do a sample calculation, I want to point out the importance of this um, idea here because you see here that the kinetic energy of a gas particle is really just proportional to its temperature, right, by this R constant right here. So the question then that's useful to ask here is, you know, when we measure temperature every time and we say, well, it's, you know, 70 degrees Fahrenheit outside, right, what does that mean? What, what are we measuring in terms of uh, the molecular property? And this equation tells us that what we're measuring is the kinetic energy of that sample of gas, okay? And so that's useful because kinetic energy, of course, is related to speed, so, basically what we're saying is that at a relatively hot day, or if we have a sample of gas that's hot, at a high temperature, then it's a very high kinetic energy, which means the speed on average will be very high. Whereas at a lower temperature, the kinetic energy is lower, which means the speed is, will, will be lower. Okay? So, that's really what temperature is measuring. Temperature is measuring this, this motion of particles. It's saying that if you are at a higher temperature, your speed is higher on average, and then if lower temperature, your speed is lower, okay? So oftentimes, this kinetic energy equation, this kinetic energy here is often called thermal energy of, uh, of gases because it's really the energy that's uh, associated with temperature. Uh, the reason for this temp uh, value of temperature uh, is because there is some thermal motion motion that generates this this heat okay that's observed for uh, a particular sample of gas okay so that's really an important idea here and the other thing i want you to look at is also how um you know the other thing that's important to note here is that the value of t remember is in the kelvin scale so the lowest number temperature can have is zero okay what's that mean well, remember, this kinetic energy is the kinetic energy of motion, okay? So if the lowest temperature this thing can have is zero, that pretty much means that at any kind of temperature we're doing an experiment, you know, how often do we do experiment at zero Kelvin, right? It's not really some uh, practical temperature to work with, but most work that we do, reactions, we do them at much higher temperature at, you know, 25 degrees Celsius, which is about 298 Kelvin, right? So at that particular temperature, there's quite a bit of kinetic energy. Even if you think about going to something like a liquid uh, nitrogen temperature, about negative 170 uh, degrees, 180 degrees Celsius, for example, you still have quite a bit of kinetic energy. So things that you think of are frozen, they're really not. They're still moving. Particles are still moving, even at very low temperature. So that's another, I think, um, you know, very meaningful conclusion you can draw out of this equation is that things are moving even at very very low temperature okay so 
the rest of this video I just want to use to work through this particular example of just using those formulas that we talked about earlier to solve a couple of problems here and the problem is fairly straightforward it's just asking you if you have these two gases CH4 and N2 and uh, both of them one in one case at 273 the other case at 546 which is double that calculate in each case average kinetic energy and RMS velocity okay so uh, to work through this problem you just have to really remember these two equations they're important here first is the equation for the average kinetic energy which is 3 halves RT and the other one is the equation for the average velocity or RMS velocity which is just um, uh, square root of 3 uh, RT over M okay and then using these two equations would be able to answer this question um, I think there's a little typo here I'm not sure why this number 20 show up here but in any case let's go ahead and do the calculation for CH4 at 273 Kelvin so we have two different temperatures so if you were to do this at uh, this is for CH4 at um, uh, 273 Kelvin you'll find that the kinetic energy expression is just 3 halves RT the only thing to remember of course is the R here has the following unit joules per mole Kelvin and it has a value of 8.314 when it's expressed in that unit and then the temperature is 273 Kelvin so the Kelvins cancel out together and what you get uh, at the end would just be a value of about 3 404.6 joules per mole okay so this is would be the energy of uh, a mole of gas at 273 Kelvin now you notice that it doesn't really matter whether you're calculating this for CH4 or nitrogen because we're gonna get the same exact number which is this number right here and really this goes back to that idea that I was asking you about in the simulation about Dalton's law which is why is it that when we have you know obviously two different types of gases and they have different sizes right the size of this is uh, smaller than the size of this molecule why is it that they have the same pressure this is really the same question why is it that they have the same energy kinetic energy okay and the answer of course is that the bigger molecules they tend to move a little slower so the impact that they put in is not you know it's uh, kind of balanced out even though they have a bigger mass they tend to move slower so then the kinetic energy then balance out with something that's smaller but moves faster okay so that's the idea that I was trying to highlight also in that Dalton's law um, uh, discussion with using the simulation okay so this is the same concept here being repeated again uh, you can do the same calculation for kinetic energy at 546 Kelvin if you plug in those numbers again but at 4, 546 Kelvin you should have 6809.2 uh, joules per mole okay as your answer now we're going to go ahead and calculate the RMS velocity so I'm going to do RMS velocity on this side just remember this is the formula for RMS velocity where M is the molar mass of the species so now you have two different gases CH4 and N2 so you're going to have different molar masses let's try this first for U RMS for um, CH4 at 273 Kelvin okay so then what you need to do is take a square root of 3 times R now remember R is 8.314 in this case joules per uh, mole Kelvin but I want to actually write out the joules the joules itself is remember it's kilogram meter square per second square that's joule and then this whole thing is per mole Kelvin that's R this this part here is R okay so that's what you have to understand that that part there is R then we multiply that by the temperature which in this case is 273 Kelvin that's the numerator divide that by the molar mass of CH4 now if you look up the periodic table you say the molar mass of CH4 is 16 grams per mole but if you write 16 here the unit the mass unit doesn't cancel because the joules unit has a unit of uh, mass of kilograms so you want to convert this to kilogram to make sure that those units will cancel so I would write this as 0 0.016 kilograms per mole and then carry out the calculation 
you notice that these units now cancel. Kilograms cancel with kilograms. Um, kelvins cancel with kelvin, and then mole per mole cancel with per mole. We're left with just meter square over second square. And if you take a square root of meter square per second square, what you get, of course, is just meters per second. And in this case, um, at 273 kelvin for CH4, you should get a speed, RMS speed, of about 652 uh, meters per second. Okay? Now, I want to point out, by the way, that it's important to pay attention to this unit because I've seen many, many mistakes by students where they just forget to convert this and then they get a speed that's actually quite a bit lower than expected. This is actually a fairly high speed and that's what you should keep in mind is that the speed is very high. Now, if I were to convert this to miles per hour, right, miles per hour, this is our common measure of speed for things that we can observe like cars for example and, and you know things like that you can do a little unit conversion here by miles to meters and then seconds to hours and so on you'll get a number that's about 1458 miles per hour okay okay there's not a lot of things that move this fast right so your car at the most can go what 100 miles per hour uh, before you get caught by the cops so this is really a fairly high speed. Think about it. It's the average speed of a gas particle, okay, CH4. Now, you can do the same calculation here for all the rest of them, for all the other gases. I'm just going to list the numbers here, the answers, so you can, you know, verify your calculation. So if you were to do the URMS for the nitrogen, in this case, at 273, what do you expect the number to be in comparison to the 652? Well, what you have to realize is, again, going back to the actual formula, the formula is 3RT over M, right? So the only thing that changes here is the M because the temperature is the same. So then what is the molar mass of this would, uh, compared to CH4? Well, N2 is a heavier particle. It's 28. This is 16. So then because it's heavier, it's going to travel a little slower. So we expect a slower speed. So in fact, if you calculate this, what you get is something around 493 meters per second. This is at zero degrees Celsius. You can imagine how fast things are moving. This is at, again, zero degrees Celsius, the freezing uh, temperature of water. Okay. Uh, you can do the same calculation, as I said earlier, at uh, the second temperature, which is two... Um, which is double, I should say, the original, the 273, so it's 546 Kelvin. When you do that, the number you get here is about 923 meters per second for the methane. And if you do that for the nitrogen, you get a number that's um, at 546 Kelvin here. You get a speed that's a little bit slower, which is 697 um, meters per second for the speed of nitrogen at 546K, okay? Okay, so this gives you a little overview of what we did there in, the, in terms of calculation. Here we start with the kinetic energy calculation, then we went on to do the URMS calculation. But again, a couple of things I want to point out, make sure you keep the correct units here, for, especially for the speed calculation, because that's the one where people made the most mistakes in. But also to remember that this is really fast. They're going at very high speed, okay? And that's something to think about later on as far as well you know if they're going so fast how come we don't really smell a gas uh very quickly right if if you if it's going that fast then you would imagine that things would you know the gas will get to you in a fraction of a second but we know that doesn't happen so the question is why